working from home means every day is bring your kid to work day. And if you don't have the right tools and mindset to balance work and family responsibilities, you may end up throwing in the towel. Black Moth Radio gives you the upper hand in starting and managing your ideal lifestyle while creating your own business, doing what you do best, and doing it from home. So, grab the nearest ink pen and prepare to take notes, because this show is packed with discoveries, tips, and experiences to help you through your journey. Let's begin with our host, Robin Bull. Hey everybody, and welcome to an audio edition of What the Fuck Friday. What the fuck? This is being recorded for November the 17th. 2017. My name is Robin Bull, and I am joined with my co-host and husband, Danny Bull, for once in a really, really fucking long time, because, you know, I guess he's, like, been avoiding the podcast and some shit. Maybe. (laughs) Would you like to make your grand announcement now? About... Nah, nah, nah. You gonna wait for the end? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, uh... I don't know. (laughs) Before we get started, just a reminder for everybody to go to twitter.com slash therobinbull and facebook.com slash therobinbull. And make sure that you join us over on confessionsfromthecouch.com. We have more than 1,500 subscribers. You can submit an anonymous confession about what it's like to work from home. It can be a good confession or a bad confession. It doesn't really matter to us, and we will post it anonymously. And we also talk about all sorts of good stuff there, too, everything from weekly recipes, although we haven't done that in a couple of weeks, to, uh, you know, work from home tips and hints and things that we find funny. So, are you ready for What the Fuck Friday? Probably not. Okay, well, we're, we're going to start with some news from yesterday that you may not know about, because I think if you knew about it, you would have said something. It's a more serious story. Um... And, and, and the answer is not gun control, because much like anything else, you cannot legislate people into good behavior. I mean, look how well abortion laws work out, and drug laws, those worked out swimmingly. Yeah, that war against drugs is going well. Yeah, so... Um, so great. So six weeks ago, there was the Vegas shooting, right? At Mandalay Bay? Right. Which was awful. Nobody really knows what led up to that, other than people speculate it was probably mental illness related. I thought they were saying ISIS now. He's too white for that. Let's just be honest. I'm just telling you what I heard. And I don't say that from a perspective of, you know, anyone... Or is that the conspiracy theory? I think that's a conspiracy theory. I'm not saying that to mean that anyone who is not white is automatically a terrorist. That is not what I'm saying. That's exactly what she's saying. That's not what I'm saying. What I... What I am saying is I'm pretty sure ISIS, you know, isn't going to take that guy. First of all... But they took responsibility for it within, like, five minutes. Yeah, because they wanted wanted to fucking make a name for themselves. But he didn't fit... I'm pretty sure they've made a name for themselves already. He, you know, he did not fit, you know, any of the characteristics that are commonly found. That's true. There is, you know... He fit in, He would fit in so, so well, which, you know, is great. But they have a history of radicalizing people first, and those people looking to fit into what someone would consider an ISIS member with the scraggly beard and whatever else. That's weird. That, that's kind of, that's profiling, saying they would have scraggly beard. Whatever. Hipsters have scraggly beards, and you don't see No, most of the hipsters have, like, well-combed and oiled beards, so don't even go there with me. <laughs> okay, so you had that happen six weeks ago, right? Then just two, three weeks ago, there was the shooting right outside of San Antonio. Ended up being domestic violence related. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yesterday, a California gunman killed his wife, hid her under the floor in his house, and then went to the community school and tried to kill everybody. The good news is... Yeah, I heard about that. The, the good news is... Um, from what I understand, only one child was actually shot. 
um, but they were all in the building at the time, and when the bullets came in, it ricocheted and hit one of the kids or something. Yeah, but I'm still not sure that's good. I guess it's good because it could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse. And, and do you know who saved all of these children? Like, ultimately, whose decision it was to bring all of those kids inside because she felt something bad was about to happen? The school secretary. Yeah. The school secretary made the call and said, get everybody in. Um, some of the parents that were milling around around that time helped get the kids in too and helped keep pe people away from mirrors and stuff like that. But what's weird about this school, it's made out of wood. It's not like brick or like, you know, something mm. that we'd see around here. So. Right, right. Um, Probably an older school. Right. It's a smaller school. Right. But, you know, the thing is, again... And, and, like, the head custodian was also trying to get kids in. And the dude pointed his gun at the head custodian, and the gun misfired and wouldn't go off. You don't, you don't fuck with the janitor. So. All you, you leave the janitor the hell alone. He's not the one that did. He's just there to clean up after you. So here's my thing with the What the Fuck Friday as far as the story. Number one, you've got these people running around that are doing this shit. And all of it leads back to some form of domestic violence. And everybody wants to holler, well, make it harder for people to get guns. Make it harder for people to get guns. Um, that yeah, that's, that's worked that's well in Japan. That's worked well in Japan. But the thing is here, we have such, and I don't mind guns, but we have such, we have guns ingrained in our culture. To, if you want a gun, there's a way to get one. And I don't mean just going to a gun show. You know, when I bought a gun, I just had a bill of sale and I bought it off somebody else. Um, there was no back, there was nothing involved. And when the permanent VPO was issued against the ex, he was ordered to turn over all of his weapons. He didn't do it. He never did it. And in fact, nobody from the court or law enforcement ever bothered to go and enforce the order. So that ends up being the issue really is what are we going to do about mental health and domestic violence it's not just people can get guns that shouldn't have them it's what are we going to do to stop the core issues that are happening and why are these things becoming so normalized that this seems to be okay well, i'm just wondering how gun control is going to help you stop hitting your wife that doesn't make that's kind of like prohibition where they tried to outlaw alcohol to get people to stop hitting their wives it didn't work. Yeah. At all. Nope. I mean, these guys got sober and started beating the shit out of their wives even worse. And they're and, like, oh. And by the way. through withdrawals. By the way, the shooter this time, his last name is Neil, N-E-A-L. I believe his first name was Kevin, but I may be wrong. I've kind of scrolled down in the story. Um, he has, you know, a history of domestic violence charges or allegations, the story says. So... You know, we, we have to start looking at this more as a we need to raise people to consider and appreciate the lives of others versus inflicting their will using, well, any sort of violence. But, you know, to go and shoot up a church or to go and shoot up a school is a special kind of low. So, yeah, that's that's definitely a... Who's one of these people ever thought, you know... Maybe do this a little differently and see what happens. Well, so maybe if I'm not such a douchebag. The mother, <laughs> the mother of this guy, the mother of the gunman. Um, on the news yesterday, it was alleged that she actually had to be sedated when she found out he did this and all this happened because apparently she had been trying for a really long time to get him to accept some sort of mental health care. Um, and, you know, she, she did everything she could in her power as far as keeping him calm, placating him, which some people think that's the wrong thing to do with net jobs. But when you know someone can be dangerous and has the capacity to do something like this, I get why she tried to, you know, just do what she could, you know. Yeah. But apparently, yeah, the news, news articles reported that mom tried everything she could and, you know, this motherfucker killed his wife. And put her under the fucking floor, apparently. Um, 
but he, apparently he would always refuse mental health assistance and never got an official diagnosis. So, and you know, but both both of the m more recent domestic violence related shootings bear strong resemblances to uh, you know what I went through. So, at least the personality traits that are mentioned. Yeah. Well. So. Uh, yeah. I just don't. I don't see Stop. why we don't just start beating people with, you know, the hose in the backyard whenever they start acting stupid again. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. So anyway, are are you ready to move on to more what the fuck Friday stories? Let's do it. Sean Hannity fans destroy their oh, curing yeah. coffee makers. After company pulls their advertising. This is from... I already knew about this, but I always like to, you know, cite a news story. Um, by the way, the last one was from Washington Post. Because I didn't say where I was getting my information from. The last one was Washington Post. This one comes from New York Times. Liberals are... This is a quote um, of a tweet. Liberals are offended by the video of a Keurig being thrown off a building. Please retweet to offend a liberal. That tweet, which was posted with a video of Keurig Green Mountain Coffee Maker being dropped from a second story of an apartment building, was one of many sent over the weekend with the hashtag Boycott Keurig. And by Sunday, apparently it was trending. So why are people boycotting Keurig? Because apparently last Thursday... Not not the 16th, the week previous, Fox News host spoke about the allegations against Roy Moore, the Alabama, Alabama Senate candidate. Um, everybody kind of knows what's going on there, so I'm just going to leave that alone. And um, on his radio show, he was speaking with his co-host, Linda McLaughlin, and he justified, apparently, Moore's reported conduct by calling one of the encounters consensual. Um, so later on the show, Hannity said the statement was, quote, absolutely wrong, end quote, that he, quote, misspoke, end quote, and then said that he believed that it was possible that those accusing Roy Moore are doing it for money or political gain. Um, and then, basically what happened, Keurig, you know, they ran an ad during his show, and then they got some backlash asking... On Twitter, one of the tweets says, Good afternoon, you're currently sponsoring Sean Hannity's show. He defends child molester Roy Moore and attacks women who speak out against sexual harassment. Please reconsider. That was from at GoAngelo. And um, Keurig responded to him and said, Thank you for your concern and for bringing this to our attention. We worked with our media partner and Fox News to stop our ad from airing during the Sean Hannity show. So this pisses off a bunch of conservatives. And they start destroying Keurigs, which, by the way, they already own, so Keurig already had their money. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go I'm gonna go off on a tangent here. Okay. Because I have a follow-up for you when you're done. One, there, this guy has not been tried in a court of law, so I can't say one way or another whether he did it or not. Fair enough. One, I'm, not, I'm not him, so I didn't, I, I didn't either hit on or have sex with or molest little girls little girls so i can't say one way or another whether he did it so um that that's one two why in god's name would keurig be advertising on fox um primarily because don't we all know that liberals pretty much do nothing but drink coffee all day. Do we? I, you can't anymore. You have a heart problem. But <laughs> they told you you had to pick the Mountain Dew or the coffee, and you picked the Mountain Dew. So Most of the time. So, I mean, you know. It's one of those times I really wish we were, like, live streaming the show on Facebook. <laughs> so everyone would have saw me flip you off. <laughs> and, all right, three... Sean Hannity's already come out, what was it, yesterday, said you have 24 hours to either clear this up or you need to drop out of the race because he thinks it's getting to the point where it's ridiculous as well as everybody else. 
you know, do I think that, what is it, five girls now? Quite a few. I think, I think five is right. You know, do I think all five of them are lying? No. Do I think maybe one or two of them are lying? Maybe. I don't know. I, like I said, I wasn't there 30 years ago to check. Well, like we said with the whole, when we were talking the other day about it, it's a really weird statement when everyone's like, were you dating these 15-year-old girls? And Moore's response was, I didn't date nobody without they mama's permission. Yeah, that, that, that. That really doesn't help your case. No, no, not at all. Like, I get it. Way back in the day, times were different. This was the 70s. You still, you didn't really get. Not when someone's like twice your fucking age, man. Yeah, that, like, that wasn't. Three times, and. You know, that's just crazy, so... That wasn't really allowed back in the 70s, last time. You know, some states it was. Alabama, probably, it was still legal. To, still gross. Know, get married to a 14-year-old girl with the parents' consent. I don't know. Not a citizen of Alabama. Never have been. Can't say I look forward to ever being one. You know... Primarily because I like the West. I'm not a big East fan. <laughs> okay, so then later, and this is from Gizmodo, the Keurig chief executive, Bob Gamgort, uh, there was an internal memo that was leaked. And in that memo, he blamed the boycott on his social media team for dealing with a sensitive situation out in the public. And he quoted... This gave the appearance of taking sides in an emotionally charged debate that escalated on Twitter and beyond over the weekend, which was not our intent. And then he apologized. I apologize for any, negati any negativity that you have experienced as a result of the situation and assure you that we will learn and improve going forward. As we all know, the external environment is changing rapidly. We need to dial up our speed and responsiveness to stay ahead of developments, and we will. Sean Hannity accepted his apology, although it's very clear the CEO is not apologizing for pulling the ad from the Hannity show. He's just apologizing for ultimately how people perceived the action. Um, and Sean Hannity is now giving away 500 Keurigs to say thank you for the apology. Oh, you know, the apology that really wasn't directed at him. Well, you know, the, the CEO's right. His team should not have dealt with that publicly. Agreed. Because a better you, response, cho you chose sides. A you, better response to go, Angela, would have been, thank you for calling this to our attention. We'll look into the matter. Yeah. And leave it alone. Drop it. Yeah. And then pull your ad. Because as a but, business, we've discussed this before on podcasts, as a business, you have to be really fucking careful about what you say online because you end up in that situation of looking like you're taking sides, even if you're not, or even if you are. Yeah. And, be, you know. Oh, oh, God. That's just bad. I, I know. Do you want to move on? Or, or do you have more that you need to get off your chest about Sean Hannity and the Keurigs? Attack of the Keurigs. I mean, I, you know why he did it. Within 24 hours, they saw their freaking Keurig sales plummet. Because, you know, there's nothing that a bunch of rich Republicans like better than have, getting to be lazy about making their own damn coffee. I don't even own a Keurig. I actually own um, an off-brand. I think it's what, a Mr. Coffee Maker, but it yeah. does the same thing. Yeah. But aren't they owned by Keurig, most likely? I don't know. <laughs> but, you know... I've had two Keurigs since we've been together, and both of them stopped working within, like, a year of yeah. having them, which is why I stopped buying them, because yeah. they seem to be a piece of shit. Yeah, and, you know, there's there's nothing rich people like better than being lazy and rich, so they're probably out buying crap <laughs> Keurigs every, like, six months. Or out buying the latest, no, man, you want, like, a fancy-ass coffee machine? What's that one that, the Nest Cafe that's advertised? Oh, yeah. Let's get one of those bad boys. <laughs> <laughs> when we get rich and lazy. Okay, you ready for the next story? Four-year-old stuck with meth-filled oh. syringe at a retail shop in Ardmore, Oklahoma. And I'm specifying Oklahoma because we get some listeners from Oklahoma, but we have listeners in New York. We have them in California, Pennsylvania, uh, Now, whether or not you have Ardmore in your state or not, Yeah, we don't know. 
So this is from K4.com, which is one of our local news channels. Officials in Ardmore are investigating after a child was stuck with a meth-filled syringe at a retail store. I'm not laughing about the kid. It's just, how does this fucking happen, right? Police told a local news affiliate the mother heard her four-year-old son yell while he was playing and then saw boxes fall. The child then told his mom he had a scratch and told her about the syringe. The boy reportedly began acting strangely when his mother found the syringe and she called 911. Who the syringe belonged to, we don't know, said Assistant Chief Kevin Norris. All we know is it was left there at the scene and the child unfortunately stuck themselves. Authorities say the child was taken to the hospital. Um, Little boy, when their mom was first found her meth. I, I think, I honestly think, <laughs> because, okay, I've it's no secret. My parents were addicts of drugs, not meth, but drugs. I, I think my dad would have done meth if he could have afforded it. But that brings me to my point. Who, in their right mind, would just randomly leave a syringe full of meth laying around in a retail store to stick some random person? You're not going to do that. If you're a junkie... He had already shot himself up with meth before, and he left it on the shelf and forgot it. I don't think so. See, I, I have to... I, I think maybe mom planted that and is going to try to sue the store and make money. I, I think this is a... She, so mom went out, bought <laughs> drugs. Or was already an addict and had it on her. <laughs> and a syringe. And then left it on the shelf so her kid could use it? Mm-hmm. For money. Sounds about right for Ardmore. <laughs> so Any that's... of you who don't know about Ardmore, Oklahoma, just drive through and you'll understand oh man anadarko is worse that time we went through there in chickasha but I, I can't say anything bad about anadarko since it's an indian reservation and that's not real nice but the government housing for that indian reservation is scary fucking terrifying i have seen ghettos across this country and anadarko is terrifies me there, there's just shit there that shouldn't be there. All right, fine. Let's 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 see you stick up for Chickasha. Uh, I can't. Chickasha sucks. It's like, <laughs> I don't. But you know, I don't like college towns either. I don't like Norman because of OU. Uh, I'm not this a video doesn't autoplay. Of, it's gonna autoplay. Sorry. Go I, ahead. I don't. I don't like Stillwater because of OSU. I mean. I, I don't like Chickasha because it's got a college <laughs> on it. I don't like colleges because they're full of pretentious little 19 and 20 year old dumbasses. He says to his wife who is a college graduate and who taught college. I didn't like your students either. That's a damn lie. <laughs> okay, yeah. The, the girl that had the really cool hair. Yeah, I liked her. See? What, what was her name? I don't remember. She was awesome. But she would always braid her hair with, like, the red and the purple. Oh, man. Are you ready? One of the reasons I'm mad I'm not black. I don't get cool hairstyles. Am I going to have to edit that out? No, no. You should leave that. <laughs> it's not cool to be white. We all know this. You're going to get hate mail. Yes. <laughs> okay. Ready for your next story? This is from Huffington Post's Weird News section. They have a weird news section. That doesn't surprise me. Sausage Roll Jesus stirs up an early Christmas controversy. Offensive or just holiday humor? What the fuck? I'm going to show you the picture in a second, but i got to read you the article first. Again, this is one of those times where live broadcasting through the phone would be beneficial so people could see this on their own. Okay, this sausage roll is bringing joy to the world and a few complaints too. Greg's... A British bakery chain with more than 1,800 locations released an advent calendar with coupons and cheeky holiday images. One shows three wise men gathered around a manger with a meaty treat in the place of the baby Jesus. Yes. This led to some grumbles and even a boycott. So here's a boycott. It's a tweet from at simply Simon TFA. Please boycott at Greg's official. To protest against its sick anti-Christian advent calendar. What cowards these people are. We all know that they would never dare insult other religions. They should donate every penny of, the, penny of their profits to Ad Salvation Army UK. So, here's a picture. 
by the way, Greg's eventually apologized. Um, but I'd, I'd like to remind everyone, if you're boycotting, that's your business. Cool. Whatever. Um, but if you're boycotting this because you think it's somehow anti-Christian, I just want all of you to know, Christmas is a pagan holiday, you jackasses. You stole our trees. <laughs> you stole our stories. You stole our baby. <laughs> you stole our mother Chris, image. Christian stole my baby. <laughs> the Christian stole my baby. So, yeah, it's not yours to uh, be offended if you want. But it's not anti-Christian, okay? It's fucking funny. I, for one, enjoy a nice, you know, sausage sandwich. Here, uh, my dear husband left the room to go check to see what the dogs are barking at. So, the UK Evangelical Alliance told BBC Money that it wasn't, quote, too outraged, end quote, by the image, but was concerned that the holiday was being used for marketing. Marketing, you know, where you fucking go into the stores in October and the Christmas shit is already on the shelves. Like, I swear to you, at least here where I am, the Christmas stuff started hitting the shelves in August. It was so crazy. But, yeah, Greg's apologized and said they were really sorry that they caused an, any offense that was never their intention, according to Sky News. So, um, even though some self-described Christians thought that it was actually pretty funny. And just so you guys know, penis worship has an impressively long history. You know, penis, sausage. Um, some of the tweets, though, from the Christians who weren't offended says things like, Oh, crumb, all ye faithful. How flimsy is your religious belief that you can't handle a sausage roll? Um, Britain unites behind Jesus' sausage roll, religion to avoid Brexit. I, I think maybe it's because it, it's sausage, so it's pork, and Jewish people are not big on pork or pork product. Maybe. But Christmas is pagan. I'm just trying, I'm trying to think of why this is so offensive. And then some people were saying they don't even like Greg's, the bakery brand itself, but they're going tomorrow to buy one because people are being dicks about it. Thank you. So. Because here's my belief. Oh, gonna, did did be... you hear when you left the room, some people like uh, were complaining they weren't offended by the image itself so much as Christmas being used for marketing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Sorry. I, I don't even know where I was going now. <laughs> When's the earliest you've noticed Christmas shit being out on the shelves? Like, I noticed stuff in Hobby Lobby in, like, August. It was August. out before, like, yeah. It was out in <laughs> August. I mean, what the hell is wrong with you, Pete? What the fuck? <laughs> there are two other holidays before this one. Come on. You ready for some more weird news? Actually, a... I'm going to do my plug in the middle and at the end. Okay, do it, do it now, because we only have two more weird news yeah. stories. So you can't look at my screen. <laughs> on December second, we have I have a professional jiu-jitsu match coming up. Dun 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 dun, dun, dun. dun. through Submission Hunter Pro. Um, so it's a basically what it'll be is it's a ten minute match, and it doesn't stop until somebody gets hurt. So it's really kind of, it's kind of like, those of you who don't know what jiu-jitsu is, it's MMA without punching or kicking. So it's just the wrestling. There's still lots of bone breaking, though. Yeah, there, there's, you know, the Split arm bars. Split eyes. Arm bars and chokes. and Need for stitches. Yeah. You know, I went to Vegas and got my eyebrows busted open because somebody headbutted me. Uh, and, but anyways... So I've got tickets for sale, and you can buy them online if you. How do people buy them online if they're listening somewhere else or can't like hook up with us to get their tickets? Uh, you can go to Garcia, G A R C I A Promotions dot com, or you can go to Mike the Truth dot com. Mike M I K E. Yeah, um, both of those will have tickets for sale. And what do they need to do to make sure people know that the ticket sells? 
It will have a section where it will say support a fighter. Uh, I think it says support for on uh, Garcia Productions. And then it, for Mike the Troop, it just says comments. And you're supposed to put in the fighter's name. If you put in my name, Danny Bull, B-U-L-L, -L, the there's actually a portion of the ticket sales. If you buy them online, it's 10%. Goes to Fighting for Autism. Um, great charity. Does amazing work for kids uh, who are on the autism spectrum. It does things like pay for therapy, pay for therapeutic equipment. Uh, a lot of these kids... For them, it just get, you know, and they also have a martial arts program throughout the country. There's a bunch of jet, there's a bunch of places across the country that support this. Um, it gets them a scholarship so they can get into martial arts. I don't know if anybody's ever seen the autistic kid who was kidnapped for four days in New York. And it, it was awful. They live stream beating and... Uh, you know, yeah, I remember that story. It was, it, was, it was bad. So they, I got into the helping these people out with their cause. Basically, the day after I saw that, I found this organization. Because and they, I found I did it because you know I have an eight year old, kid, an eight year old child who's on the spectrum. So, you know, helping the, helping these kids out. With one being able to defend themselves too, this you'd be amazed at how martial arts for a lot of these kids actually helps them out even in school. Um, burning off the excess energy after school helps them the next day. Self control. Yeah, it helps build self control. Well, that too. I mean, because if you're in the right place, they're teaching you how to keep everything. You know. Things like self-discipline, self-control, and it is an amazing, amazing charity that I've been uh, doing my best to help out. So anytime you do support for me whenever you buy a ticket, that's on GarciaPromotions.com or MikeTheTruth.com. The proceeds from those ticket sales go straight to them. They don't go to me. I don't keep a dime. Um, the only, the only way I get paid from this match is if I win. I don't get anything from ticket sales, so. So you better win. Yeah, well, actually, that'll be <laughs> fine. That, that's not going to be a problem. Um, so please, even if you, do, even if you are out of state and you don't plan on going. You can still buy a ticket and buy, support the charity. Buy a ticket, support charity, or go to fightingforautism.com. Make sure you're on the American one, on America's. Um, because they are worldwide. But yeah, they're worldwide. They're in the UK. I think the three major branches are North America, uh, US, UK, and Australia. There's also a Canadian one, but they're not. Yeah, they're we still, do. They're still pretty small. We do get some Canadian listeners and listeners that are over on the other side of the pond. So if if you're on the other side of the pond, you can always, of course, choose that particular fighting for autism to make a donation. Yeah, but. Um, I'm encouraging everybody to go out and at least buy a ticket, show support for, for me, that shows support for fighting for autism. Absolutely. So there's my first plug. It's a You've pretty got good another plug. one coming up. It's a pretty good plug. Get ready. Okay. You ready for uh, some... plug. <laughs> Are you ready for some breaking possible presidential candidate news? Again, from HuffPost Weird News. I swear to God, if they say Hillary Clinton. No, again, I'm no, done. that's not. Okay. I said weird news, not uh news. Yeah. Okay, ready? Ready. Okay, first of all, some first names, even though they look easy to pronounce, can be pronounced in a couple of different ways. So if I mess this up, sorry, I don't watch a lot of porn. Which is weird for a sex editor, you'd think, right? Porn star... Cherie DeVille considering presidential run with Coolio as vice president. Oh, what the fuck? Really? Um, she is considering running against Donald Trump in 2020 election with Coolio as her running mate. She has not officially filed and Isn't won't... Isn't that the chick that's ran for, like, 
public office in no. whatever state she's from. No, and... because there is one that has won several times. Yeah, the... that's what I, yeah, I was no. wondering. Cause... Not the same chick. Okay. Well, they're all like blonde <coughs> and fake boobs, so I have no idea who's who anymore. Well, she hasn't officially filed, and she won't until she's convinced that there's enough momentum to really get behind it. And She does have a website. We are not officially necessarily endorsing it, but hey. We've got a reality TV star as president. What's the difference between that and a porn star? At least she knows how to professionally get bent over. Oh, Karachi. <laughs> Pornstarforpresident.com. I like it. And um, in August, she released an introductory video with Coolio in it and a former pro wrestler, wrestling named Virgil, and various other porn stars. She's 39 years old, and she's been thinking about running since Trump was elected. Quote, this so she's is... she's been at this for 10 months. Yeah. Okay. This is what she's... This is a quote that she gave to the Huff Post. When he first ran, I thought his campaign was a stunt or a joke, and people were only watching because it made for good TV. I thought when the election came, people would do what's right and not vote for him, but people seem more interested in celebrity than a person's views and more interested in the spectacle. So, then she went on to say, if a spectacle is what the public wants, she's willing to provide that if her efforts can help unseat Trump. Quote, my philosophy of governing is based on integrity, honesty, and openness. I will listen to my experts. I'm not an insane narcissist. I love other people. End quote. <laughs> Well, she has managed to prove all of that, hasn't she? Well, so far. Just with her career choice, that's all I'm saying. Oh, and, um, by the way, she's no longer a porn star. She's now working as a physical therapist. But she believes that her career experience, I'm guessing as a whole, can translate over to the nation's highest office. Quote, I have good communication skills. Obviously. I can read people. I mean, if you've ever watched her porn, she's, I'm she's a great communicator. I'm diplomatic. I want, I want you to take your pants off. <laughs> I'm diplomatic with people of all backgrounds. Oh, well, that's fairly obvious as well. I'm open-minded. and as I, have, as I have Pornhub <laughs> open on my phone and watching her. I'm open-minded and accepting of people of other cultures. In case you're wondering, I'm not really looking at that in front of my wife. I, I just thought it'd be... He saves that for his bathroom visits. <laughs> but, um, she says that her political views lean toward libertarian liberal. She says she agrees with libertarians on a lot of issues, but not the environment or health care. She thinks that the government does need to help in those areas because she doesn't believe that you can depend on the free market to meet the need. Oh. And as far as Coolio? As a libertarian, I'm going to tell you you're stupid. But don't you want to know why she wants Coolio for her vice president? Oh, God, yes. This is a quote. A black man who, a, a black man who used to be rap but never has been to prison but talked about going to prison? Quote, he represents the American dream. He started from nothing and made something of himself. Coolio also issued a quote to L.A. station, radio station, K-E-S-Q. Somebody's got to do something, man. Somebody's got to try. We need normal people. We need normal, regular, everyday people in office, end quote. Okay, so like... What the fuck are you seeing wait, the hell? So, <laughs> a few years back, you remember Celebrity Wife Swap? He was on there. Oh, yeah. And far from normal. And I don't I don't mean just eccentric sort of. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure you really want him in office either, America. Yeah, you, you definitely need to look that one up. Celebrity Wife Swap with Coolio if you really think that guy's normal America. But, I mean, he would just be in the VP role. And look at all those great Biden memes that we have, right? <laughs> so much. What was that? was on that cartoon. <laughs> you think that's abnormal? Lincoln jacked off a kangaroo. Read a history book. <laughs> My husband watches a lot of uh, Brickleberry. Over and over and over. And over. So. I have to listen to dumb crap at night or I will not sleep. I saw this, speaking of dumb crap, Joe Biden meme. Where he's like standing and his fists are up like this. Yes, I've seen it. And it said, uh, he's he's talking to Obama and he says, I'm going to ask Trump if he's hungry. 
and Obama says something either like "why" or "that's nice, that's nice Joe." Idea. That's nice, Joe. Yeah, and um, Joe says, "Cause if he is, I'm gonna give him a knuckle sandwich." Yeah. I feel like Joe Biden is everybody's favorite grandpa. Yeah, I, I heard he might be running for president. Yeah, but he's it's not he's not ruled it out. He said. Yeah. So. Okay. I don't know if I'd like him as president. Hold on, I, 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 I gotta. Like Obama, but... Hold on, I gotta stop this video from auto playing. Okay. So, final story. I told you about this one yesterday in the car, but we gotta talk about it. Again, just so people know my source. Huff Post. Oh, yeah. Weird news, although that's not my original source from yesterday. Yeah. But Huffington Post has gone with this, and it's great. Cards Against Humanity is trying to stop Trump's wall by purchasing Borderland. The company said it retained a law firm to make Trump's plan as, quote, time-consuming and expensive as possible. Um, here's the article in part. Cards Against Humanity celebrating the holidays with a six-part promotion that the company claims will help save America. Part 1. Stop Donald President Donald Trump from building a wall by purchasing a plot of vacant land a along the U.S.-Mexico border. Donald, this is a quote from Cards Against Humanity. Donald Trump is a preposterous golem who is afraid of Mexicans. He's so afraid that he wants to build a $20 billion wall that everyone knows will accomplish nothing. So we've purchased a plot of vacant land on the border. Everybody knows that Mexicans own grappling hooks. <laughs> and retained a law firm specializing in imminent, Batman. in imminent domain to make it as time consuming and expensive <coughs> excuse me, as possible for the wall to get built. On day one, all Cards Against Humanity Saves America recipients will get an illustrated map of the land a certificate of our promise to fight the wall, some new cards, and a few other surprises. The sold-out promotion cost $15 and included a total of six America Saving surprises. Participants will receive their surprises in the mailbox throughout the month of December. So, right, yeah, go, they're, go, they want right. to buy some... I mean, ultimately, eminent domain will happen, but I really like the fact that they're going to make it as hard as possible to, and, and since to put all... up this stupid wall. And since we, we have walls, guys. We have walls already. We have fences. We have, we have walls. We have fences. We, we have, have border patrol. Yeah. I mean, they would just do their job. To not This whole, like... Well, it's even like guns. Grinds. If 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 you want to do something, if you want to get something, even if you're not supposed to, you're going to find a way. Yeah, but I'm just saying, if they would actually do their job, you know, these guys get paid fairly decent money, but they would do their job as far as the whole vetting process and all that and that and you know look at the criminal background and you probably wouldn't have this whole this whole like theory that all mexicans are evil cartel drug lords that everyone's perpetrated and it it is solely because people don't want to do their jobs or people are getting <coughs> you know taking bribes and crap like that well you know if you're not going to be honorable then you don't deserve to have the job that's my two cents on that um here's my other nice what i'm going to bring up we all know the cia listens to podcasts there you go my conspiracy theory no that doesn't surprise me and they look for keywords such as what i'm about to say u.s government officials if you want to not have to deal with the expensive expense of having to fight this in court don't build a wall on the on cards against humanity's land just around it and you'll be fine problem solved or just skip that part and then make, oh you still got your wall built here's my two cents on the money aspect of it though why in god's name are you spending 20 billion dollars on a fucking wall when you still have homeless people in the streets you know as well as I do, that's just placating when people bring up things like homeless people on the streets, homeless veterans, sick and dying people. The government's never going to do anything for that shit. They, no, they no, want to no. attack these problems that can't actually be solved so that they have something to do. Yeah, it's a lot easier to sit there and go, oh, we're just going to build a wall to stop drugs from Mexico. Or you could, I don't know, 
spend twenty billion dollars on drug recovery, and if nobody's addicted to drugs, then there's no I have a better freaking idea. problem. Let's spend twenty billion more dollars on education. Oh, that'd be nice. Then not, we, not, then we don't have dumbasses wanting to go out and do not drugs. this core competency shit. Because my problem with Common Core isn't necessarily that certain standards should be met. It's that I've seen the way some of that schoolwork is done. They're making it harder than it needs to be. Because when you're an adult, you're not going to do something in 29 steps when you know you can do it in three and get the same result, right? Right. So. But leave it to the government to add, you know, 26 steps to a three-step process. I will say about that the same <laughs> thing I told to a former client about the incessant number of meetings. Yeah. Just because you're busy doesn't make you productive. No. So. <laughs> that's all the stories I have. So would you like to do your plug again for your... But plug! <sighs> huh? Well, right, that's that, so much for on. being family friendly. Not that oh, we ever Jesus, were. I've been cussing this whole time. Not that we ever were, I said. <laughs> so once again, um, go either... Uh, hit me up on Facebook, facebook.com uh, or slash, sorry, Danny Bull. Um, they could also message the Facebook fan page yeah, if they need to. Yeah, you can also the Facebook fan page. Uh, facebook.com slash the Robin Bull. Danny is an administrator on there. He can see the messages, so you can always, so you know. If you want to pick up tickets from me, um, you know, feel free to message if you're within the Oklahoma area, or if you're in, within the metro area, I'll bring them to you. If you're not, if you're in Tulsa or something, yeah, you're going to have to meet me somewhere halfway. Or we can drop them in the mail. Yeah, or we can drop them in the mail, because, I mean, we saw it till December 2nd. Um, purchase your tickets for Submission Hunter Pro 20. That's in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Cox Convention Center. Yeah, the Cox Convention Center. Um like I said before, proceeds from my ticket sales go to fightingforautism.com or fighting fighting for autism, the charity. Um, fightingforautism.com. If you are just wanting to make a donation to them, you know, go ahead and do it. Um, if you're wanting to buy your tickets online, garciapromotions.com or mikethetruth.com. Uh, put your support in for Danny Bull, B-U-L-L, -L, and your the portion of the ticket sales go to Fighting for Autism. If you do not put anybody's name in, they keep the money, so you're just wasting money at that point. If you're not planning on, if you're wanting to show support for Fighting for Autism, and you decide just to not put any, my name in, they keep all the ticket sales. I don't get it. They don't know that you know, you wanted to support somebody. So, um, go out there, shoot us a message, we'll meet up with you and get you the ticket, or buy them online. But definitely buy them, show support for Fighting for Autism, show support for me, and uh, come out and just watch it, because it, it's going to be an amazing time. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, for everybody there, there are tickets ranging from $35 to $75. Um, and the $75 tickets are table seats. They're in the VIP section. So I just yeah, I wanted to go to ahead and... Well, well you were spinning, so I, I wanted to go ahead and make sure people knew. Yeah, the, the tables come with food and refreshments. I, I can't remember off the top of my head if they said there was going to be alcohol at the tables or not at the VIP section. I imagine there will be, because... Seems like a lot of the events that have these VIP sections have that. Yeah, um, they come with like a free bucket of beer or something like that. But, um, since it's at the Cox Convention Center, I can't remember if he said there was going to be the alcohol for free, you know, your first round of alcohol for free or not. But, definitely, go out, contact me, contact Robin, um... In the evenings, you can always find me at National Martial Arts, Monday through Saturday. But they're moving, so make sure that people know. Oh, yeah, the week, the week of Thanksgiving, that won't be open. Like, most most gyms and most places will be closed for Thanksgiving. But after that, 
that following week they'll be open and this week they'll be open so come out just let them know that you're wanting to buy a ticket you're wanting to buy it from me they'll come get me and you'll you know you'll be showing support for fighting for autism and i am done with my plug and you told them the date for the fight december 2nd i think so okay just Pretty making sure, sure. Just making i'll say sure. it again december 2nd <laughs> okay so that's all we have for the audio edition of what the fuck friday um what the fuck <laughs> make sure that you join us on facebook and twitter twitter.com slash the robin bull facebook.com slash the robin bull you can also head over to confessionsfromthecouch.com and uh sign up to get posts by email and while you're here on podbean don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and you will get alerted when new podcasts come out thanks for listening hopefully you're walking away from this podcast with a plan to implement the tips you've heard, a great attitude, and you subscribe to Black Moth Radio to ensure that you never miss any of the goods. Whether you're a hopeful work-from-home freelancer or you're well settled into your work-from-home lifestyle, we hope you've learned something that you can use. If you're ready to more about the work-from-home lifestyle, check out cellfy.com slash Bull questions comments let robin know by going to facebook.com slash the robin bull or confessions from the thanks for listening join us next time and keep learning